So I have a problem. I invited a bunch of people to come to a meetup on BLM land in the desert in California. And they're all on their way here. And I just went to scout out the location. And it's not going to work. It was a nightmare. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am freaking out um, because I'm about to have my annual patron meetup, like I said, where I promised them that we were going to be boondocking for three days on public land together and having campfires and going to see the national park. Well, I hightailed it out here from Colorado because it was like negative six, negative 11 there, and I wanted to miss a couple of storms. And when I got out here, I didn't go straight to the BLM location because I wanted to get a shower and dump my tanks and recharge. So I came to this local RV park called the Joshua Tree RV and Lake Campground, which I was familiar with already because they offer, you know, like day showers and dump and water. After I got settled, I took my Jeep over to check out the BLM land that my friends recommended, and they find great spots all the time. But apparently, according to the locals, this BLM land has taken a turn for the worse in recent years. Plus, there was going to be a big rainstorm, and it was all on a dry lake bed that was going to flood. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you more of that. But first, I'm going to tell you what happened with my meetup. Here's the thing about RV life. You can be a regular person that hooks up. You can be a boondocker. But everything always changes. You have to be able to pivot either way. I've been in situations on the road where there was, you know, torrential rain or fires or smoke, floods, snow, whatever, where I had to be able to pivot. And I think this is one of those times because it's going to be raining so much that people's solar is not going to work. Every place around here, the BLM is on sand. It's going to get muddy. People are going to get stuck. That whole lake bed could flood. So I'm trying to work something out here where we could boondock or, you know, get a good rate on spots if people want to hook up because I think some people will. Otherwise, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, literally, I'm having a party and no location to have the party. If it were just me alone, I know several nearby locations to stay overnight. The casino, the welcome center, harvest host, but not for over a dozen people. So I don't know, you guys. Um... Keep your fingers crossed. I'm seeing what I can work out. I'll let you know what happens. Okay, fast forward. The campground has been amazing. They were able to accommodate my people. A lot of them had a hard time getting here because of this crazy weather. And it has been absolutely amazing. What a wonderful group of people. We have had to pivot because of the weather. So um, luckily one of our people has a rig big enough that we can meet in because it's still raining. So I'm gonna go over and do a giveaway with my people, do a round table Q and A and show our favorite gadgets. But then after this, you guys, I'm gonna go over in my Jeep because I would never do it in my rig and film what that BLM site looks like. When we got together, all of my patrons got a little gift bag as a thank you from me. But in one of those gift bags was a special giveaway from Brooklyn Bedding RV Mattress. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I have a Brooklyn Bedding RV mattress inside of my Airstream, which I was super excited to get because my old mattress was really uncomfortable. Personally, getting a good night's sleep is really important to me, and I have loved my Brooklyn Bedding mattress. I've had it for a year. Well, my patron, Debbie, won the mattress, and I'm really excited for her because she has a jackknife sofa right now that is really uncomfortable, and she works as an RV inspector, and her back hurts at the end of the day. I chose the Signature Hybrid and Medium Firmness. Debbie has chosen the Aurora Lux, so I'll get back to you guys and let you know how she liked that in her RV. But let me tell you why Brooklyn Bedding is so great for RVers. First of all, if you go on their website, they have a whole bunch of different mattresses to choose from in different sizes and weights. It makes shopping for an RV mattress so much easier. They also have a 120-night sleep trial, so you can check it out, along with a 10-year warranty. 
One of the best parts about Brooklyn Bedding RV Mattress is that they deliver the mattress for free, but it doesn't come as a full mattress when you get it. It comes rolled up with all of the air out of it. So for me, even with my little 16 foot Bambi Airstream, I was able to get it through the door with a friend. We took off the plastic and it poofed right up. And that mattress is shipping from their factory in Arizona, which means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price without a middleman bringing up the cost. I personally love my RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out rvmattress.com. I've put the link below and a coupon for a 25% discount. Thank you, Brooklyn Bedding, for sponsoring this video and for giving Debbie a brand new Brooklyn Bedding RV mattress. Okay, back to the BLM nightmare. If you've been following me, you know that I almost exclusively boondock on BLM land or national forest land, and that's how I like to camp in these beautiful, serene, quiet, safe places. But it took me a few years to figure out how to find the really good ones. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do, because soon I'm doing a tutorial on how I find all my good spots. But this place was not one of them. This was my first trip down to see that BLM land. Now, I've been on the road for a few years, and so I have a system for checking out places, and my patrons get my own personal travel map so they know that they go to places that are good. But this place was not one that I would recommend to them. The road in was really awful, as you can see. And then I started to see the campers. Well, don't think these are abandoned RVs. Most of them absolutely had people living in them that were there beyond the 14 days. Well, my group was coming. So I kept thinking, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to tell them to go down that one road that's good to that one little bit of land that's good. But then I started to turn around and there was just nothing. I tried to go out to the dry lake bed itself, but it was squishy and clay and I almost got stuck in my Jeep. And that was before the rain came. This was not a place that I would have camped myself, and I certainly didn't want any of my Patreon members to camp there. Now, I took a few still photos, which I'm going to show you when I went back out with a few of my members to show them, and I have to tell you, they were scared to park and even take pictures. One of them looked over and said, is that a sleeping bag on the ground? And is there somebody in it? And then they all started going, drive, drive, drive. Now, I'm not here to disparage anyone who's camping out in this area or camping like this. I know that sometimes people do what they have to do, but that doesn't mean that I have to stay there. I heard from some of the locals that this area does flood and that they've also had a few deaths out on this BLM parcel because of people ODing, and I didn't want to camp there. And two full days after that rainfall, when I was leaving the campground, this is what the road outside looked like. I can't imagine what it was like for those people camping in that lake bed. If my crew had stayed out there on that BLM land with all of the flooding and the neighbors, I would have had a bunch of unhappy campers on my hands. So thanks to the Joshua Tree Lake and RV Campground for giving us such a wonderful place to stay. We made it all work. I camp on Bureau of Land Management land all the time. In most places, like 99% of places, it's absolutely free. And in most places you can stay there for two weeks. And it's my favorite way to camp. But I have learned that if you pull into a place and it looks really sketchy, you leave. Because I want to camp in a place where I can go outside and sit in my chair. And I don't have to worry about walking out by myself or driving in and out. Um, you learn that there are other places. When I first started on the road, I would stay at places because it was the only one I found on the app. So if you end up going to a shady BLM spot, you don't have to stay there. You can always pivot and hang out with your friends and still have a good time. I'll see you guys all next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.